previous time, I made an AI named Chicos and watched it suffer in an attempt to learn how to survive in the wilderness. It was quite a funny experience, but it was lacking action. After some time it would get repetitive and boring, so this time I tried something more dynamic. I created two AIs and placed them in an environment that would force them to interact with each other, as well as take quick and smart decisions to survive. This is Tulio, and this is Miguel, and as you can see they have a small problem. They are being chased by a dragon in a never-ending dungeon, <laughs> however because I wanted to make it optimized it consists only of two rooms and the back rooms move in front when the agents pass a certain point. That caused a lot of problems later on, but at least it's optimized I guess. Um, anyway, at the end of each room there will be one of three obstacles. A single door, a wall or a double door. What? I was constrained by the asset pack I used. By the way, I'm gonna leave the link to all the assets in the description below. Okay, back to our characters. Tulio is slower, but he'll open single doors much faster than Miguel. Also, he's the only one who knows how to open double doors. Why? That's a good question. Next question. Tulio is quite weak and has only 1 HP, but thanks to his medical degree he can heal Miguel if that one wants as well. Miguel, on the other hand, runs faster and can pick walls much faster than Tulio. Also, because Miguel is strong, he can break obstacles like single doors and walls straight by roundhouse kicking them. However, doing so will injure his leg and he'll lose 1 HP out of the 3 total that he has. In case Miguel has less than 3 HP, he can ask Tulio to heal him, and if Tulio agrees, Miguel will get healed back 1 HP. So, as you can see, there is quite a lot that the AI will have to learn, and I'll give more technical details a little later. But now let's see what our agents were able to learn after about 15 hours of training and 10,000 iterations. Yep, don't ask me what's going on there, cause I don't know. After 15 hours of training, the agent just broke. <laughs> Funny, right? Wanna see how 15 more hours of training ended? Here! Hilarious! But wait, wait, there's more! After only 10 more hours, the AI found a better way to do the whole thing. I'm not entirely sure about how he did that, but once he got behind the walls, he wasn't being chased by the monster anymore, he didn't have any obstacles to pass, so it was just easy win for him. Ok, now back to being serious. Here are some of the most successful runs from the final training of the agents. Initially I expected that by making Tulio slightly slower, it will bring the interesting behavior where Miguel arrives first at the door, but instead of unlocking it and losing more time, he waits for Tulio. It happened few times, but I don't know whether it was pure luck or actual strategy. Similarly, I thought that by making the monster slower, I'll give the agents more time to explore before dying. Which did work, the agents learned faster how to run and unlock doors, but they weren't learning any strategies, because they didn't need any. 
the monster was quite slow, they were quite fast, so there was no need in hurrying and creating different smart strategies. So what I decided to do was gradually increase monster speed along training. And I think that actually really helped. At start I was going to train not one, but two brains, one for Tulio and one for Miguel. Also I thought it would be nice to use nav mesh to move the agents around, but the first problem I've encountered with that was that whenever a room was generated, it would lose all the nav mesh data and would need to be baked again from script, which I didn't manage to do. Even after hours of training, the agents were unable to achieve any result because of that, so I decided to move to rigid bodies. I used rigid body movement instead of simple transform because I wanted the agents to collide with the environment. Then, after training for a few hours, I noticed that the agents will lose their coordination whenever their body gets tilted a little bit. Guess what the reason was? All this time, the AI had no clue about its rotation in space. I was giving it its own position and many other data, but not its rotation. Imagine somebody always yelling at you how far you are from the door, but not telling you in which direction it is. Confusing, huh? Now add to that the fact that you are being chased by a dragon. I love machine learning. Immediately after giving the agents their rotation, they were able to train properly, and soon they even managed to pass few rooms until one of them simply broke. I couldn't find the exact reason for that, but I assume it was because of the way I was rewarding and punishing them, so instead of having two brains for each agent, I made one brain and fed it all the data that I was feeding the agents before. So that was Tulio's position, Tulio's rotation, current trap in front of Tulio, Miguel's position, Miguel's rotation, current trap in front of Miguel, Miguel's health, distance to the monster, and some other booleans. So based on all of those observations, the agent will make decisions which will be stored in an integer array length of 6. First integer controls Tulio's rotation and it can take values from 0 to 2, where 1 is rotate left, 2 is rotate right, and 0 is do nothing. Second one can be either 0 or 1, 1 will make Tulio defuse the trap in front of him and 0 again will do nothing. Third integer also takes values from 0 to 2, 1 will make Tulio offer healing to Miguel, 0 will recall the offering and 2 will heal if both parties agree on that. Integer 4 is similar to the first one but it controls Miguel's rotation. Fifth integer can take value 0 for doing nothing value 1 for Miguel defusing and value 2 for Miguel breaking an obstacle. And the last integer is 1 when Miguel is requesting healing and 0 when he's not. The AI then tries to find combinations of those 6 integers such that the reward is as big as possible. The agent will be rewarded 0.01 for every frame they are alive, also the agents will get a small punishment if they try to defuse the wrong obstacles and reward it for the correct ones. In this video I went a little bit more in depth into technical aspects compared to previous one, but if you still have any questions don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. Also I uploaded this project and the previous one to my website, where you can download them and play around with Chico, Stuli and Miguel. Hope you found the video entertaining and if so please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. This will really help keep me motivated. See you next time.